Hello, fellow Rosarians. Thank you for joining me today for a garage video. I am so excited to learn how to propagate, and I did a video a few weeks ago with Jason from Fraser Farm to try to tweak what I'm doing wrong. It takes three weeks or so to see the results, and I have been successful now with some of my rootings. So I'm going to do a video in the very near future to show you how to propagate. As we prepare for that though, I want you to see how I set up my propagation station so that you can start thinking about setting yours up. So here in my garage, I have my propagation table and then I have my racks of um, you know, the plants that I'm trying to grow. So let's get closer and let me show you. So let's talk about what I have here. I have a sturdy table that I feel comfortable can handle alcohol and any kind of sterilizer that I want to use on it. It's really important that when you're taking cuttings that you keep the area from the cut to your surfaces to the um, pots that you're putting them in. Everything really needs to be sanitized. If a cutting fails and you have, um, don't reuse that soil because it's failed. There's typically a fungus or something in that soil just get rid of it. It's not worth the three weeks or so that you're going to put into trying to root it to save uh, that soil. So um, I have a surface that I wipe down regularly, either through Clorox wipes or just simply spraying it with alcohol. So I have an alcohol spray bottle. This is probably the number one thing that I use with uh, my propagation cuttings because I'm going to clear my table, I'm going to spray my pruners, I'm going to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. So I have a spray bottle with some alcohol, I keep my paper towels closed so that I can wipe down the table um, when I'm ready. I want you to get a, um, a huge bag of party cups from the food store. On my table, I do keep Gooby Gone because I'm always uh, redoing the labels that I have, the metal labels, and I can just, when I have a, um, a sticker that comes off, I can just take off this label and put it in there. Recently, I've been using it because I've been trying to use the rose pruning seal, and that stuff is crazy sticky, and <laughs> you get it on your hands and just everywhere, and so it's great to have something like that on your table for quick cleanup. So in addition to having a section for my pruners, my writing devices, my spray bottles, I'm going to have all of my rooting hormone. And we will talk more about this when I start showing you how to root. Uh, but this is probably the best uh, rooting hormone that I have found. It is a gel and it's 3%. Uh, something even more gentle could be something along this lines. It's a powder. I've seen other brand names that are 1%. So as you're starting to look around, make sure that you're paying careful attention to the percent that you're buying. Um, more is not better. And so this is 8%, and 8% would be used for very difficult to root plants. And so I'm actually trying this on boxwood to see if um, this works for boxwood. But what happens is when you use a high percentage and it's not needed, the plant calluses in places that causes it duress. So just don't go and say, I want 8% because I want the strongest out there. You want something very gentle so that we can gently encourage the rows to root um, and it doesn't get too stressed out. So um, besides my rooting hormones, I also have liquid hormones. I have two different kinds and I'm using these for after the plants root. I'm going to remind everybody to look at the video that we did with Jason on propagation. Um, we point to a schedule or a calendar that he provided, and it was shocking to me that something that I haven't been doing, even when I get uh, plants that are just too tiny, uh, like from Rogue Valley, and I'm keeping them in the pots for a little bit longer, you're supposed to be fertilizing them in those pots like twice a week crazy. So I want to use something like the Super Thrive. It's got vitamins in it. Um, you could also use uh, fish 
fertilizer or great big roses, but they definitely want liquid versus a granular. So keep that in mind. What else do I have? Okay, so you're also going to want to get um, these markers. One of the most frustrating things is if you have rooted something and uh, you forget what it was and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to wait until it blooms to figure it out. And even then I, I might not know once it starts blooming because it takes you know, three years for a rose to mature and look the way that the catalog picture shows. So not only do you have that, but you also want to make sure that you're putting key information on here. Uh, for instance, it's like watching paint dry as you're watching these babies and coming out every day and checking on them. And you're going to say, well, how long has it been? Oh my gosh, has it been two weeks or three weeks? Should I be seeing roots by now? So make sure you get the date on here. So on my tags, I typically write um, the date. So, um, you know, October uh, 9th. And then I say it's, um, you know, um, Benjamin Britton and um, I'm using 3%. Um, so I want to make sure this is just, you know, the, what I'm used to reading. I know when I look at this, okay, you know, maybe it hasn't rooted yet. I haven't given it enough time. And typically we're going to start seeing about that two, three week mark that we'll know whether or not we were successful. So if it has been considerably longer than that, um, you would know whether or not it's time to check those roots. So uh, also with these, I found that I want to share with you, let's say you make a mistake or um, the rose passes and uh, you want to clean it up um, and reuse it. You don't have to throw these away. You just need to use nail polish remover or acetone and then you can wipe the whole thing up and use it again. So also I have on my station my perlite and perlite is sold um, from Home Depot. You can have it shipped to your house and it comes in those great big bags. I just don't like having open bags. I picture them, you know, all over the floor if I accidentally uh, run into it or the dog hits it. So I put it as soon as I get it into containers to keep it all in one space. You're also going to want some kind of a container to mix up your peat and your perlite. So I have found that these bins from Lowe's are great. They've got, you know, the lids on it so that after you mix it up, if you want to run out in the yard and grab some more cuttings, you can put the lid on and it'll all stay moist. So I think that's everything that you need to see on this station. So let me go ahead and show you now over here. Okay, so you're definitely going to want a rack or something to put your plants on. So we're trying a couple of different ways to propagate. I'm sure you've seen the videos online where you can use a two liter. So if you're thinking that this appeals to you and using this method, then start saving your two liters and then your grow pots to be able to do that. So I'm trying those. Um, when I'm not using natural light, what I'm using are just T5 um, appliance bulbs. These do not have the casing around them. And when I was first putting this together, I thought, well, isn't it going to get so hot that you can actually touch these with your hand and uh, it you know, it's fine. So the way that I attach my T5s, do you see I've got, um, I have bungee cords here. So I've taken bungee cords and I've attached the T5s underneath and of course wired them to plug in. Another application that I'm testing is using these clear bins. I have been successful enabled and I have been able to root using the clear bins. So that's something that I definitely would um, highly suggest. And I'm also trying a new method. Uh, my friend Sang on one of the propagation sites shares a video on this, and I will link to that for you. I think that that is everything that you need to get started. I also have added heat, and I'm going to try heat mats, especially as I go into the winter. There's a temperature gauge, and you put it into the soil, and then it digitally measures over here what we're reading at. And right now it's reading at 73. I'm happy with that. But I know as we go into the cooler months that I'm going to need that heat here in the garage. I also have a humidity meter in the cookie jar because I wasn't seeing a lot of condensation. But the humidity meter shows me that it is 90% humidity inside the cookie jar. 
Think about which method that you like. I'm sure that you have looked at a lot of them online, but so far I'm having great success with the Tupperware bins. I'm trying the two liters because everybody seems to be having success with that. And then my friend Sang has great success with the cookie jars. So anyways, I hope that that gives you some things to think about. Uh, where are you going to put your propagation station and what items you need to start thinking about as we get ready to propagate. So thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.